It's September 10th, 2023. I'm at the Georgia Southern University Armstrong campus. Such a mouthful. And I'm at where they have their three planted common pawpaw, a, oh, I don't you can't see, a semina triloba trees. This is the one back there. And the third one's over there. And if you see all the little green things popping up between them, these are the pawpaw suckers. I'll just do an overview for people who have never heard of pawpaws before this video. So, assuming that these original trees were grown from seed, the three originals, this, that one, and the one in the back, they are considered individuals if they were grown from seed. Pawpaws are like people. You need two different people to make a baby and you need two individual pawpaws to make a baby. Unlike some other trees, they can't pollinate themselves. So in the wild, they developed a strategy for making sure that their flowers can get pollinated and they can make babies. And they do this. If you could lift up all this dirt and see the roots underground, you'd see a super deep tap root right under there or maybe not if these were planted from containers but in general you'd see a deep tap root underneath the tree to anchor it in place and get nutrients and then further up you'd see roots going sideways and then those roots eventually pop up through the ground and form a new stem so there will be a root somewhere under the surface leading directly from this to this and to all of these little ones popping up here. They're all connected to this tree, most likely because they're over here. This one seems to get a lot of them. So all of these things you see popping up here. A few of these are black cherries. This is a baby black cherry. You can tell because the leaves have little serrations on them, like a saw blade. And if you have a sense of smell, you can sniff them and they should smell like cherries or like cherry coke. They smell really good if you can smell them. So this is a pawpaw. All of these are pawpaws. They had some growing here that grew like eight feet tall last year in a single year, which is absurd. But they keep chopping them down, which is just sad because it's a waste. Anyways, the pawpaws do this because, like, say, pretend this tree was, like, a hundred feet that way. The only way it could get pollen from this tree to that tree to make babies is if they can reach out closer to each other and have flowers closer together than the original trunk is. So see this one. Assume, if we assume it came from that tree, or maybe it's from this one, it's got a direct line from a root, and then when, it's, when this is old enough to form flowers, it'll be a lot, it'll have a lot better chances of getting pollinated and forming fruit. You know, let's go look at this one because this one has really big leaves. It's just really healthy. Just look at these leaves, just for the record. <laughs> They're giant. And if you are in Georgia, this is a way to tell common pawpaws, a semina triloba from small flower pawpaws, a semina parviflora, because these leaves are massive. This is my hand. And just look at that. Small flower pawpaw leaves. Like, I think the biggest ones I've seen are like this size, maybe a little bit bigger than this, but compare this to that. And yeah, it's giant. But anyways, this video is to show you mostly just how fast the root suckers are all growing back and then that this tree is starting to change color. And there's a bug flying around my face. Pawpaws in fall, once it really starts to get cold, they'll just turn straight to yellow. They don't go to red or anything like that. So eventually this whole tree will be just be solid yellow and then all the leaves will fall off for the winter. So I'll do another video when that happens. All right, and yeah, if you want to see how to identify them, you just have to look at for my other videos because there's a bug that's just chasing me. I'm pretty sure it's a mosquito, so that's really annoying. 
So bye-bye.